The light breaks. It's the sun making its slow and measured approach above the horizon. Like many of us, emerging beyond the white curtain. We sing, like Langston Hughes once wrote in the singular, I too sing America. We play without the masks that Dunbar scripted so long ago. And we compose the music that must be, is being heard with ears that would not hear before. We are departing the kitchen of the darker brother. This is the tomorrow, and the table is set. Welcome to Classical Music in Color. I'm Jubilee Gibson. I hope you're having a happy new year, and you had a wonderful Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and MLK Day, or whatever other holiday event you celebrate. On this January 2023 edition of Classical Music in Color, we ask the question, is music your life or just a side chick? The answers are different for my guest, violinist Rachel Barton Pine. She talks about her continuing discoveries of music by black composers. We'll hear some of the music, too. And then there's Sean Sutherland, a black Canadian amateur pianist, although he hates the word amateur. pianist is Sean Sutherland. He's playing Prelude Number 11, composed by David Bonton of Montreal, by way of Haiti. Sutherland performs at least one piece by a black composer in competitions as a show of pride of his roots. I'm actually originally from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, so um, in the Caribbean. Um, went to school in the U.S., went to school in Canada, um, but now I'm here in Canada. Sutherland's performance at the recent Clyburn International Amateur Piano Competition didn't win the big prize. He believes it was because of another risky choice he made. But he did win one of the four jury discretionary awards. I was hoping to win. I took a big risk um, with the Kapustin Sonata. Um, in the second round. Now, Kapustin, um, for those of you who may not know, is an Ukrainian composer. Um, he writes in a jazz idiom. So if you imagine jazz the Prokofiev, it's extremely difficult. Um, the harmonic language is jazz. Um, so lots of chord extensions. Amateur is a difficult word for Sutherland to acknowledge because, as he told me from his home in Toronto, he considers himself a professional when entering and, in some cases, winning amateur piano competitions. You are people with solid, successful careers. Mm -hmm. You have this love of the piano that you cannot let go of. Yeah. And you put it all on your own dime to yeah, attend much. and compete. Correct. What is driving that? I think you have a point. Um, a lot of us are probably overachievers in a way. And I think, you know, we have all achieved some, you know, varying measures of success in our professional lives. But maybe there's this latent need to achieve something else. <laughs> <laughs> So I think there's a little bit of that. I, and, and to be quite honest, I think it's probably for a lot of us, especially those who take it seriously, extremely seriously. Um, I think there's a, some residues of our um, overachievement from childhood. Um, but that aside, um, for me, entering the, the Chopin Amateur, I had entered it in 20, I think it was 2018. And I, for some reason, forgot to play one of the required pieces in the semifinal round. Oh, and oh. Yes. But anyway, I mean, I can't blame anyone for it. No one said anything. And so I'm listening there in the finals and I'm like, I know I play a lot of Chopin. Like I have a lot, a lot, a lot of Chopin in my rep. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I could play this music just as well as anyone in this finals. So 
I think going back in 2021, I came on a mission to win. Sutherland did win first prize at the Chopin Amateur Piano Competition in Warsaw. He also got as far as the semifinals back at the 2016 Clyburn Amateur. So what's his day job? You know, the one that provides him the funds to travel to competitions? Sutherland is putting his four college degrees to work as a product manager for a company developing a trading platform for protein commodities. Protein commodities. I'm enjoying my role as a product manager, um, and it, it allows me to tie all these different backgrounds that I have. And so I enjoy that. Um, so it's really, I, I don't have any definite plans yet. I'm just trying to decompress after that singular focus of getting ready for the climber. That I was really very focused on that uh, for quite some time. So still trying to figure out what it is. Sean Sutherland, product manager and award-winning amateur pianist. Here is more of his performance of Kapustin's Sonata No. 1. John Sutherland. Links are on the Classical Music and Color page on SecondStreetDreams.com. After a tiny break, I'll be talking to violinist Rachel Barton Pine about her latest album of black composers. Twenty-five years ago, violinist Rachel Barton Pine released the album Violin Concertos by Black Composers Through the Centuries. This is her performance of the Violin Concerto in F-sharp minor by the Afro-Cuban composer Jose White Lafitte. She's re-released the album because one of the composers on the 1997 album wasn't actually black. This French classical period composer, late late 1700s, you know, you never know what's going to happen in musicology, right? You just do the best you can with the facts you have. So this guy, there was no existing visual image of him, no historic painting or anything. But he was referred to as Chevalier de Maud de Montpas, comma, Le Noir. So, of course, all the musicologists for decades considered him to be a black composer, because why else would he be called Le Noir? Well, it turns out that he had served in a regiment of the French army that all rode black horses. So the Le Noir was not his ethnicity, it was his mount. Still a charming concerto, I'm glad I recorded it, but it no longer belonged on my Violin Concertos by Black Composers record. So for this new reissue, she replaced him with a piece by Florence Price. Price's Violin Concerto No. 2.
The Florence Price piece was performed by the Royal Scottish National Orchestra along with Pine. It was conducted by Jonathan Hayward. He's the black conductor who's been appointed the music director of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Even with the mistake on that 1997 release, Rachel Barton Pine says she was surprised by the reaction to her album of violin concertos by black composers through the centuries. Naively, wasn't even thinking of issues like social justice or inclusion. I just really thought that as a fan of the violin, that these pieces were first rate and deserved to be heard by violin fans and classical music aficionados everywhere. Uh, of course, after the record was released, it was really life-changing because I started being invited to serve on diversity panels, and I started getting numerous requests for, um, you know, for more music by students and parents and teachers and professionals, and that led to the launching of my Music by Black Composers initiative in 2001 by my Rachel Barton Pine Foundation, which I had started as a charity and a not-for-profit um, to support young artists with instrument loans and financial assistance, but um, we added this Black Composers Project and have done a ton of research. We've collected more than 900 works by more than 450 composers. Rachel Barton Pine, the violinist who performed and produced violin concertos by Black composers through the centuries. Links are on the Classical Music and Color page on SecondStreetDreams.com. Are you looking for some grants or performing opportunities? Stay tuned. Maybe you like early music, but want to do something different with it. You know, like the Netflix series Bridgerton does in reverse, turning pop music into period works. If that's calling your name, then apply for the Barbara Thornton Memorial Scholarship. It's a $4,000 scholarship that's awarded to, as they describe it, an outstanding and highly motivated and possibly unconventional young performer of medieval music who seeks to widen their experience through a more advanced study and or auditions in Europe. Early Music America is also looking for applicants for its Marguerite Tendemann's Early String Scholarship. She's considered a shining figure in the field of early music. This scholarship provides financial support for specialized advanced study outside North America that focuses on some aspect of medieval, renaissance, or baroque bowed stringed instruments. You may know someone who might be eligible for the Marguerite Tendemann's Early String Scholarship. The deadlines for both scholarships are in early March. Links are on the Classical Music and Color page on secondstreetdreams.com. And there's something else you should know. The Color of Music Festival celebrates its 10th year this coming Black History Month. It'll be in Charleston, February 1st through the 4th. Our coda this month is a tribute and a thank you to Elaine Jones. Jones died last month. This timpanist is remembered as the first black principal in a major American orchestra. She was hired by the San Francisco Symphony in 1972. She left after she lost a racial discrimination lawsuit over their refusal, she said, to offer her tenure. But for the next 20 years after that, she played with the San Francisco Opera Orchestra. How did she get there? It starts with her mother, who wanted to be a concert pianist herself, but could only find work as a maid. Years later, in 1945, during a light breeze of racial awareness, the daughter, Elaine Jones, won a Duke Ellington scholarship to Juilliard. Her career took off from there. 
Elaine Jones was 94 years old when she died at her home last month in Walnut Creek, California. That's it for us until next month. Thank you for listening to the January 2023 edition of Classical Music in Color. We are the Second Street Dreams Audio Network on the radio and on the Triple W. I'm Judlin Gibson.